This video is sponsored by Brilliant. It's May 13th, 2019, and Alva and Alberta Pilliad settle into their courtroom seats to hear the jury's verdict. They're nervous, and so is the lawyer representing them, Brent Wisner. They're nervous because they're suing Monsanto, which has now been bought out by the German chemical company Bayer, on the grounds that the company's weed killer, Roundup, caused them to develop a type of cancer called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's the last day of their case, and the lead juror stands up to read the verdict. The room falls deathly silent, and Alva and Alberta hold hands. Finally, after a short preamble, the juror exclaims that Monsanto must pay $2 billion in damages to the Pilead family. The case is closed, and the Pileads visibly relax with joy. $2 billion is a large chunk of money. So what exactly has Monsanto done to receive such a massive verdict? In the next couple of minutes, we're going to talk about Monsanto. How they operate, how they pollute, why they've led to this graph, and what this man can offer as a solution. In Vietnam, clouds of toxic gas scour the countryside. It's 1971 and people are dying. The U.S. is at the end of a violent chemical campaign. Since 1965, U.S. troops sought to rob Vietnamese forces of food and foliage with the indiscriminate spraying of 123 million gallons of the herbicide Agent Orange. 4.8 million Vietnamese people were directly affected. And to this day, as the toxic chemical still lies angry in the landscape, many more are born with birth defects and health issues. And one of the primary companies supplying that gruesome chemical compound was none other than Monsanto. Up until the late 90s, Monsanto was a chemical company that grew to power by supplying deadly toxic concoctions to the U.S. military during their imperialist endeavors. From Agent Orange to DDT, Monsanto brewed up these mixtures primarily for war. But when peace rolled around, Monsanto, like any tricky salesman, quickly found a new market for its chemicals. Agriculture. By transforming their weapons of war into herbicides and pesticides, Monsanto introduced a militaristic mentality to farming by waging war instead on the soil, insects, and weeds. For years, Monsanto's number one tool was glyphosate, but you probably know it by a more familiar name. Quite literally, Monsanto characterizes their customers as cowboys with Roundup as their pistol of choice. With the all-new no-pump one-touch wand, it kills weeds dead and keeps weeds gone. Roundup, extended control. But Monsanto's Roundup kills more than just weeds. It kills the soil by damaging the presence of certain beneficial microbacteria, which decreases soil fertility in the long run. It kills beneficial plants like milkweed, which is the primary nesting foliage for monarch butterflies. It's led to superweeds. Its production created a number of toxic mines and factories that continue to pollute surrounding towns and watersheds. And above all else, it kills people. Glyphosate has been deemed a probable carcinogen by the World Health Organization, with one analysis asserting that long-term exposure to Roundup's glyphosate increases your chance of contracting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma by 41%, which is exactly what Alva and Alberta Pilliad were diagnosed with, and why the jury ordered Monsanto to pay $2 billion in damages to the Pilliads. And since Bayer bought Monsanto in 2018, it's been sued by over 125,000 people for damages caused by Roundup. 125,000 cases. 125,000 people harmed by just a single chemical Monsanto touted for decades. As of June 2020, however, Bayer has had to come to terms with Monsanto's past. It settled over 100,000 of those lawsuits with a payout of $10 billion. A massive payout for sure, and one that gives hope for a stronger reckoning with the polluting history of Monsanto. But with that payout came an exception. Bayer is still allowed to sell Roundup without having to change a thing. And despite the overwhelming evidence to the contrary, the president of Bayer still says that glyphosate is safe to use. Glyphosate has been and continues to be a product that is safe for its intended use, and very importantly, it is not carcinogenic. 
He said that right after his company settled over 100,000 lawsuits saying the exact opposite. Indeed, that seems to be the company line. Roundup is and will continue to be safe to use, but clearly it's not. Bayer Monsanto doesn't just offer weapons to kill weeds, however. It also supplies farmers with another insidious form of militaristic farming, pesticides. And out of the thousands of pesticides available, Bayer and Monsanto's best sellers are neonicotinoids, a group of chemicals derived from nicotine that attacks the nerve cells of insects and essentially overstimulates them until they die. In the US alone, it's estimated that neonics pervade over 150 million acres of farmland, with 90% of corn and 50% of soybean seed coated in neonicotinoids. This extensive use of insecticides has had dire ramifications. Many studies point to neonicotinoids as one of the main drivers of colony collapse disorder in honeybees, which has decimated pollinating honeybee populations in the last two decades. And because neonics are water soluble, they seep into our crops and our waterways, affecting biodiversity in every direction of the food web. The consequences of neonics like clothanidin and fipronil look like the loss of flight for house sparrows, decreased immune response in Japanese quail, and impaired swimming abilities in fathead minnows, just to name a few. In short, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring is happening once again. But of course, it will be hard to pull Bayer away from this lucrative business. In 2018, the global neonic market generated $4.42 billion in revenue. The solution then must run counter to an obsession with scorching the land with pesticides. But before we can talk about solutions, we must first understand how Monsanto and Bayer gained control of the agricultural industry through seeds. It was a windy day in Canada when Percy Schmeiser went to answer his front door. He grabbed the handle, cracked the door, and immediately was served a lawsuit from Monsanto. To his knowledge, he hadn't done anything wrong. But it soon turned out that the canola seeds that had blown into his field a while back were Monsanto's property. Because, after all, Monsanto was patenting their herbicide-resistant GMO seeds and then restricting their use. And one of the rules Monsanto constructed was that farmers were not allowed to reuse Monsanto's seed, which, it turned out, is what Percy Schmeiser accidentally did. Farmers were, and still are, required to buy new seed from Monsanto every single year. This is just a small taste of the Monsanto Bayer seed empire. 60% of the global seed market is owned by just four companies, with Bayer controlling 31% as of 2017. These companies achieve this monopoly by buying up smaller seed sellers and then patenting GMO seeds so that their Roundup-resistant corn variety couldn't be traded or replanted without legal repercussions. This also means that once you've started to use Monsanto's seeds and chemicals, you're stuck in a deadly spiral, which is exactly what's happening to farmers in rural India. There, Monsanto's BT cotton seed is king. 90 to 95% of cotton comes from the BT GMO seed. When it was commercialized in 2002, the seed promised a decrease in pesticide use while still maintaining pest control and higher yields. This was made possible because the seed was engineered with elements of pesticides within the plants. The idea being that you wouldn't need to spray as much because the plant would just kill the insects instead. But since 2002, it's become very clear that that dream is just, well, a dream. The GMO BT cotton has actually increased pesticide use because pests like bollworms grew resistant to them, and other previously non-target species like whitefly and the mealbug have emerged as new pests. On top of that, yields have declined as acreage of BT cotton has increased. In fact, according to Dr. Vandana Shiva in 2017, 31 countries were ranked above India in terms of cotton yield, and of these, only 10 of them grew genetically modified cotton. Adding insult to injury are price increases, which brings us to this graph. With the rise of Monsanto's BT cotton seed comes the rise of not only seed price, but also labor, insecticide, and fertilizer cost. 
In short, over the course of a decade, Monsanto created a predatory seed empire that drove up costs for Indian farmers, yet delivered very little in terms of yield or quality. Indian farmers are now stuck between a rock and a hard place. They can either attempt a hard transition away from the system, or continue down its destructive path. Bandana Shiva and many other farmers and activists, however, are showing us hope. Showing the world that Monsanto's, and now Bayer's seed and chemical paradigm doesn't have to be the only way. This man, Ron Finley, is one of those activist gardeners that's rebelling against our industrialized and militarized food system. He's a lighthouse on the stormy seas of chemical produce. Finley, known as the guerrilla or gangster gardener, has been working to dismantle the system of food apartheid in South Central Los Angeles for over a decade. He began in part because he... I got tired of driving 45 minutes round trip to get an apple that wasn't impregnated with pesticides. And ever since, he's been involving his surrounding community in a gardening and food system focused not on control, efficiency, and attack, but on care, abundance, and biodiversity. Finley uses what's available, repurposing an abandoned pool and leftover buckets to produce a food oasis free of pesticides and corporate controlled seeds. This new paradigm of smaller, more intimate food systems that produce food that not only nourishes the body, but also tastes good, is what we should be growing towards, not Bayer's monopoly over our food. But Ron Finley is just the tip of the iceberg. There are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of small farmers putting in similar work to craft a food system based around thriving and care. We just have to go outside, find them, and lend our support. If you clicked on this video, chances are you're looking to learn something new. If you are, then I'd recommend checking out Brilliant. It's a website and app that uses problem solving and active learning to make learning accessible and fun. Brilliant is all about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them, and then answering questions that get you to think. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. Take, for example, Brilliant's new course on knowledge and uncertainty. It teaches cutting edge mathematics like information theory, Bayesian networks, and causal interference, but in an accessible way without confusing calculations. Throughout the course, they emphasize applying these ideas to deal with the uncertainty in your own life. So not only are you learning theory, but you're also applying it to everyday life. With Brilliant, there's no tests and no grades. If you make a mistake, then it's no big deal. You can just check out the handy explanations to find out why you messed up. You can learn at your own pace and there's something for everybody. Whether you want to brush up on the basics of algebra, learn programming, or learn about cutting edge topics like neural networks. So if you're curious like me and want to learn something new, then go to brilliant.org OCC or click the link in the description and sign up for free. As a bonus, the first 200 people to go to that link will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Hey everyone, Charlie here. This video, as always, was made possible by my Patreon supporters. They donate a couple of dollars each month to help me grow and build this channel so it can reach an even bigger audience. So thank you so much to my Patreon supporters and thank you for watching. I'll see you in two weeks.